China flies 103 military planes toward Taiwan in a new high in activity, the island calls harassment. China's military sent 103 warplanes toward Taiwan in a 24-hour period in what the island's defense ministry called a recent new high. The planes were detected between 6 a.m. on Sunday and 6 a.m. on Monday, the ministry said, as is customary, they turned back before reaching Taiwan. Chinese warplanes fly toward the self-governing island on a near-daily basis but typically in smaller numbers. The Taiwan ministry didn't explain what time period it meant by a recent high, China, which claims Taiwan as part of its territory has conducted increasingly large military drills in the air and waters around Taiwan. As tensions have grown between the two and with the United States, the U.S. is Taiwan's main supplier of arms and opposes any attempt to change Taiwan's status by force. The Chinese government would prefer that Taiwan come under its control voluntarily and last week unveiled a plan for an integrated development demonstration zone in Fujian province trying to entice Taiwanese even as it threatens the island militarily in what experts say is China's long-running carrot and stick approach. The recent actions may be an attempt to sway Taiwan's presidential election in January. The governing Democratic Progressive Party, which leans toward formal independence for the island, is anathema to the Chinese leadership. China favors opposition candidates who advocate working with the mainland. The presidential candidates had no immediate comment Monday on the latest Chinese military activity. Taiwan's defense ministry said 40 of the planes crossed the symbolic median line between mainland sea, Haina, and the island. They included more than 30 fighter jets as well as mid-air refueling tanker planes. Taiwan also reported nine Chinese naval vessels in area waters in the previous 24 hours. The ministry called the Chinese military action harassment that it warned could escalate in the current tense atmosphere. We urge the Beijing authorities to bear responsibility and immediately stop such kind of destructive military activities, it said in a statement. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Mao Ning asked about the reported military activity, said there is no such thing as a median line because Taiwan is part of Chinese territory. China last week sent a flotilla of ships, including the aircraft carrier Shandong, into waters near Taiwan. The drills came shortly after the U.S. and Canada sailed warships through the Taiwan Strait, the waters that separate the island from the mainland. Taiwan and China split in 1949 when the communists took control of China during a civil war. The losing nationalists fled to Taiwan and set up their own government on the island. Only a few foreign nations give the island official diplomatic recognition. The U.S., among others, has formal ties with China while maintaining a representative office in Taiwan. China's foreign minister heads to Russia after meeting with U.S. National Security Advisor China's top diplomat is heading to Russia for security talks after two days of meetings with U.S. President Joe Biden's National Security Advisor over the weekend in Malta, Foreign Minister Wang Yi, who simultaneously holds the ruling Communist Party's top foreign policy post will be in Russia from Monday to Thursday for China-Russia strategic security consultations. The foreign ministry said in a brief statement, the U.S. and China are at odds over Russia's invasion of Ukraine. China has refrained from taking sides in the war, saying that while a country's territory must be respected, the West needs to consider Russia's security concerns about NATO expansion. It has accused the U.S. of prolonging the fighting by providing arms to Ukraine weaponry that the U.S. says is needed to defend against Russian aggression. Wang's trip to Moscow comes a day after North Korean leader Kim Jong-un left Russia following a six-day visit that included talks with President Vladimir Putin at a Far Eastern spaceport, visits to aircraft plants and inspections of nuclear-capable strategic bombers and an advanced warship. Kim's trop fueled Western concerns about an arms alliance that could boost Putin's war in Ukraine. China and Russia have grown closer as relations with the West have deteriorated for both. China is looking for support as it seeks to reshape the U.S.-led international order into one that is more accommodating to its approach. Last month, it helped engineer an expansion of the BRICS partnership, which invited six more countries to join what has been a five-nation bloc that includes China and Russia. Foreign Ministry spokesperson Mao Ning called. Wang's visit to Russia a routine one to hold in-depth talks on major strategic security interests. 
Wang discussed Ukraine in his weekend meetings with U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan. Both sides described the talks as candid, substantive, and constructive as they try to stabilize their rocky relationship and manage differences over security, trade, technology, and human rights. Specifics of their talks were not released. Wang stepped down as foreign minister at the end of last year, taking on the more senior position of Communist Party Foreign Affairs Chief, but was called back as foreign minister in July after his successor, Kin Gang, disappeared from public view. It's unclear what happened to Kin, but he may have fallen out of favor with the leadership. More recently, China's defense minister, Li Shangfu, also has not been seen in about three weeks, sparking speculation about his fate it's unusual for two sitting cabinet members to disappear from sight, although it doesn't appear to signal any obvious change in defense or foreign policy. The Chinese government has said nothing about Li's disappearance, asked about it on Monday. Mao, the foreign ministry spokesperson, said she was not aware of the situation.